Hello everybody, Paul Lake here with another Physics Problem Solved. This is the channel where I solve the physics homework problems provided to me by my tutoring clients. See the video description uh, for a way to get in contact with me if you need a private tutor. My rates are reasonable and I'm really good at this. And if you find this helpful, uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And let's get to today's problem. All right, so we've got a, uh, a bullet with a mass of 8 grams is fired into a block of mass 280 grams that is initially at rest on the edge of a table of height h equals 1 meter. The bullet uh, remains in the block, and after the impact, the block lands uh, d equals 1.5 meters from uh, the bottom of the table. Determine the initial speed of the bullet. This is a classic physics problem. Um, and one that you are very likely to see, like on an AP test or, or, or an exam. And so uh, what do you need to know? Well, we're going to use two major ideas in physics, conservation of linear momentum and projectile motion. So you should be familiar with these particular topics. Pause the video right now and try to solve it yourself. Then compare your solution to mine um, if you want to check your work or if you get stuck. All right, let's get started. So um, given, I already drew the picture up there, but we um, know that m, little m, that's the mass of the bullet, is equal to 8.00 grams. We, you may want to change it to kilograms, but actually in this problem that's not going to be necessary. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't be wrong if you did. Now the mass of the big block, capital M, is 280 grams. Uh, and the height above uh, that h is equal to 1.00 meters. And the uh, the block, after it's hit by bu a bullet, it's, we assume this is frictionless, and it just whoop, falls down. And that d here is equal to 1.50 meters. And what are we trying to find? Well, that initial velocity of the bullet which I'll call v naught. So this will be v naught. I'll just label it like that on the drawing. Okay. So here's what's going to happen. This bullet's going to hit the block, and uh, that should look like a collision to you, um, a, a perfectly inelastic collision since the bullet is embedded in the block. And then this bullet block system is going to fall off the table. like Now that should look like projectile motion to you. So we're going to use both of these ideas. Uh, to try to solve this problem. So let's let's go ahead and solve it. And that's what makes this a great test problem, is that if, if a, a teacher could give you a problem like this and test your knowledge of both uh, linear momentum and collisions and projectile motion. And that's why it's a good AP problem as well. They like to give you problems where they test several major concepts uh, at the same time. All right. Now, I want to get this initial velocity of the bullet. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, um, I'm going to start off, the, at first, this is a collision problem. So I'm going to, and the way I always start collision problems is I say this. I say the initial momentum of my system is equal to the final momentum of my system. That's conservation momentum. During a collision, momentum, linear momentum is conserved. And so it's going to hit that. Now, what is the initial momentum of this? Well, the block is not moving. It has zero velocity, so it has no momentum. So all the momentum initially is all contained by this moving bullet. So it's the mass of the bullet, little m, times its velocity, v naught. And we'll say it's to the right is positive, so we'll just leave it like that. Now... After the moment, after the collision, uh, we're gonna uh, the bullet's gonna this thing is gonna be moving like this, and we want to know what what is the velocity of this just after the collision, okay? Immediately after the collision, and that's gonna be my initial velocity for the second part of the problem. So, um, well, notice the bullet is embedded in the block, so the total mass is the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block times that final velocity. Then I look at what I'm trying to find here. I'm trying to find, you know, this initial velocity of the bullet. So 
I'm going to solve for it. Uh, the initial velocity of the bullet is equal to the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block divided by the mass of the bullet times the velocity of, of, of this, you know, we'll call this V. Okay, so um, now I know these masses, right? I know the mass, of, uh, the masses are given, but I don't know what this velocity is. So I need to figure out a way of figuring out what this velocity is so that I could plug it in here and get that initial velocity of the bullet. Hmm. So this is when I look at the second part of the problem, a projectile motion problem. Now, one of the equations for projectile motion in the x direction, the horizontal direction, is this. Well, delta x equals the velocity in the x direction times time. Remember, you, you could, if you want to, put a 1 half ax t squared, right? But what's true about the acceleration in the x direction for a projectile? It's zero. We're assuming no air resistance or anything like that. So this term of, of this kinematic equation, this term just goes away. So I'm just going to erase it. Okay. And so this is what we've got. Now, this velocity in the x direction, remember the velocity in the x direction stays a constant as this thing falls down. So this is the velocity, and this is the velocity that the bullet block system has right after the collision. So, so here, this is what I'm trying to find here so I can plug it in here. All right, so I can say, all right, well that velocity in the x is equal to that delta x over t. Now this delta x, is from here to here, we're calling it D in this problem. That's what they gave. And I, I don't like using D for a displacement. I think that's a bad practice, but you'll see it in you know, books and tests and all that. They always use D and it's just use delta X, but they use D. All right, now I know what D is because it's given, but I don't know what the time is. So I need to figure out how much time went by. So let's do that by looking in the vertical direction. Well, I, um, and I'm going to use this kinematic equation. You have all those kinematic equations. You know, get them out, look at them, and say, well, I'm solving for time, so I need a kinematic equation with time in, in it. I know what delta y is. I know it's going to fall down one meter. I know what the acceleration is. It's acceleration due to gravity. Um, and so that and, and I know what the initial velocity in the y direction is zero. So I'm going to use this equation. Now this is a little bit confusing because this v oh, I'll put a v not y right here. This remember this is the initial velocity after the collision, you know. Now uh, after the collision, all the velocity is horizontal. There is no vertical component to the velocity right after the collision. So that's very nice because this term is zero. So that means delta y equals one half a t squared. Now I can solve for t. If you've done projectile motion problems before, I'm sure you've done this. <coughs> so I'm going to multiply both sides by two. So that's two times delta y. Then I'm going to divide both sides by the acceleration. And this is t squared, and I want t, so I'm going to take the square root. So I just did all the algebra on this equation in one step, solving for t. If that bothers you, just you know, take your time and do it one step at a time, and but you'll you'll get this result. Okay, now I can solve for time by plugging in my values. That's two times and delta y. Now be careful now. Delta y. The, this box is going to fall down one meter. Yes, it has a height of one meter, but what is delta y? Delta y is down, and we're going to say down is negative. So that's going to be negative 1.0 meters. And what is the acceleration? Well, the acceleration in the y direction is just the acceleration of gravity, which we know is negative, because negative means down, 9.81 meters per second squared. And then I need to take the square root of that. Now notice that the meters cancels the meters. I have 1 over 1 over second squared, which is second squared. Take the square root of that, you get seconds. And that's what time is measured in, so we know we're, we're good. 
So now I'm going to plug all this into my calculator, which I've already done. It turns out to be 0 0.452 seconds. All right, now I've got time, so now I can figure out what this velocity is. So this velocity is d, which is 1.50 meters, divided by the time, which is 0 0.452 seconds. And when you plug that into your calculator, you get um, 3.32 meters per second. So, so this is the velocity of this block after the bullet has pushed it off the edge and the bullet's embedded in it, okay? And that's what we wanted to find here. So here's this. We're going to put this right in there. And now we can just solve for V0. So this is this V0 is the, the bullet. That's what I'm trying to find, right? So the mass of the bullet, this is 8 grams plus 280 grams, okay? divided by eight grams. And you might say, well, why didn't I change to kilograms? Well, because I knew that if I change this to, you know, multiply this by, or divide this by a thousand, but I'm also have to divide this by a thousand and that the conversion factor cancels out. So you can just leave it as grams because grams cancels out. And then times this 3.32 meters per second. So you um, put that in your calculator and there's your answer. The, the, the initial velocity of the bullet is going to be uh, rounded off to three significant figures, 120 meters per second. Mm -hmm. And there is the answer. Okay. So cool little problem. Not that hard, but <coughs> it does involve two major concepts in mechanics. Conservation of linear momentum during a collision and projectile motion, where the acceleration in the x direction, the horizontal direction is zero, and the acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.8, that of gravity, and then just organize your work properly, and now comes the answer. Hey, if you found this helpful, please uh, like it, share it, subscribe to my channel if you're a physics student, um, and, uh, and if Hey, if you put a problem in the comments, if you have a problem you want to see solved or have a video made up, put it in the comments. And uh, I, I look at all of them. So anyway, uh, until the next one, take care. Uh, may the net force be with you always. That is all.